Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a little roll and write game set in the Animal Kingdom universe called Rawr and Write. Roll and Write is a roll and write game designed by Carla Kopp from Galactic Raptor Games. It plays from 1 to 100. You can play as many as you wanted, really, as long as you have enough sheets to keep score. So it plays 1 to whatever. It plays about 15 minutes, which is pretty right on. I mean, if you're playing multiple people, it could take longer. A solo game is about 5 minutes, which that's the only way I've played it is solo. But it's enjoyable. Spoiler. So this is a... Uh, you're rolling... In this game, what you're doing is you're rolling some dice. You're trying to... Fulfill a requirement of a council member, which is going to be a different kind of animal. So there may be a frog, there may be a wolf, a tiger, an okapi. And each of these different council members have a different thing that they're looking for. So you may need to get dice that add up to seven. Or pairs of dice of the same number. And you're trying to do that in three rolls in a round to score as many points as you can from the council member and maybe get some early appeasement, which means you accomplish this goal in either the first or the second roll. That's the gist of the game. There's also the, if you've seen Animal Kingdoms, which we've done a video of as well, there's the little kingdom section from that game where you're also trying to fill out some leftover numbers that you didn't put in your little council area to score additional points, points once one of those areas is full. That's essentially the game. Let's go down to the table and see if what I said about the game is actually how the game plays. All right, so here is Roar and Write um, setup. It's gonna look like this no matter how many players are playing, but this is just a solo setup. So first let me say, in solo mode, there are some missions that you can do, which you can see right there where you're trying to get so many points, so on and so forth. I don't play that way, I'm just trying to see how, much, how many points I can get and just have fun. So that's what we're gonna do here, is we're going to just see how many points we can get and have fun. My high score is 91, so if I can never get close to that, I feel good. Each player is going to get a personal agenda, which is going to be a couple goals that they're trying to accomplish. And I can't seem to hold this up, but there's a couple goals. You're going to have a, per a unique goal and a pairs goal. Looks something like that. You're going to get points for based on where you write on your council deal. All right, so now we're going to end. Uh, based on how difficult you want to play, you're going to get a different uh, variety of council members out. I'm playing easy just because I'm a cheater, I guess. So it's this layout. You're going to have an okapi, I think, a red panda, a tiger, a frog, and a wolf. And then we're going to we're going to play. So to play the game, you're going to roll the dice. So we'll roll the dice. All right. Then you're going. Let's organize them by number so we can kind of see what we have here. We got a four, five, four, one, one. All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take these numbers and you're going to fill in your board here. So let me slide this over so I can actually get my board. All right, so there's the board. So the way that you're gonna fill in is you have to fill in, you can fill in up to six numbers on your council offerings. What those mean is these are the offerings that you're gonna to try to give to a council member to score points. So say for this one, each set of identical council offerings. So basically you're trying to get six of a kind. If you can get six of a kind, you're gonna get eight points. Um, this one, if you can get five of dice of the same value, 12 points, so on and so forth. And each one is going to give you a special thing. So we're going to, each round is going to have three rolls. This is the first round. This is roll one. So on my first roll, if I write down all six numbers, I'm going to get an early appeasement bonus. But, of four points. But that's going to limit the amount of points that I'm going to get from a council member. So you're trying to weigh your action. Do I want to just write all six numbers down, take the four extra points? Or do I want to try to get the rest of the better numbers on roll two and roll three to try to get more points from the council member? Then any dice you have left over, one of your dice you have left over, you can fill in to one of the kingdoms, which are also gonna have a criteria that they're trying to meet. So two pairs, small to big, which means one higher, big to small, which is six and below. Any number can go here, and the same number can go here. If you fill all those in, you get the points of the section. That's it, so these are my dice. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill in some council members. So let's see, a set of two dice of the same value. So let's try to do that. So we'll do the two fours and the two ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write them here like this. So I'll do one, one, four. It's gonna look bad because I'm writing sideways. Then I'm not gonna write anything else down. 
because I'm trying to get a maximum the three pairs so I can get eight points. So then I have the five and six left that I can put on here in one of these sections. I can cross off something in my council offering to write down two, but you get better points if you don't do that. So I'm gonna take the six and I'm gonna put it in big to small. So big to small starts right here. Then next I'll need a five, four, three, two, one, you know, six down to one. And that is in the row one. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do roll two of round one. So you roll them. All right, so I need another pair set of two of the same value dice. So I got my second pair right, my last pair right here. I'll take fours. Uh, let's just do, uh, what do I want? I want score points for each six and ones and twos, so that's fine. So I'll just take the threes. So I'll take threes here, three, three. I completed this on the second roll, so I get two points, I circle it, and then I'm done with that. So now I have these numbers that I can fill out into here. And I'm actually gonna take the six and I'll start working from small to big. So we'll put the one, or the one right there. I said six, but it's really a one. So that's roll number two. Roll number three, I don't have any council offerings to fill out, so I'm just gonna fill in something on the top. The best thing that I can fill out. So let's do, I'm gonna do the five here. And I'll put it right here next to the, the six. All right, and that's the end of round one. All right, so at the end of the round, you're gonna do some scoring. So you're gonna have representative letter. What that means is the letter of the council member that you fulfilled, because you're trying to get all five of them to score 15 points at the end of the game. So I did, which one did I do? Uh, this one. So I did D, council member D. I had three pairs, so that gets me eight points. And I had that additional two, so that gives me 10. And then my running score right now is 10. And that is how you play through a round. So let's go ahead and do another round. All right, starting round two, same thing. It just repeats over and over and over. So we're gonna roll all the dice. All right, let's see, what do I need here? Each set of identical council offerings, but I also want a set of two of the same value. I did that, a set of five. Let's try to get a set of five here. Ooh, man, too bad I don't have the different guy. Two, three, four, five, six. Any set of dice that adds up to seven. Let's try to tackle that. So we got four and three, five and two. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got four, three, five, two. And that leaves the six and the four left. So I will use the four right here to get that one one step closer. All right, roll number two. Trying to get values of seven, and I got another one right there. Five and two, so I'll write that down here. That's awful, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm writing sideways, sorry. Uh, then we have these four, four dice left that I can use. Um, two pairs, let's do same number, let's start this one. Let's do four right here. All right, that's round two. So I get two more points for appeasing that on the second roll, or second roll of round two. Third roll of round two, here we go. Uh, I don't need to fill any more council members. So I can do a three, I can do, yeah, I wanna do the three for the big to small, so let's go ahead and put that three right there. And that is the end of round two. So then we will score. So I did this guy, L, representative L. I had three sets of, set of dice that add up to seven, so that's eight points. Of course, eight's the hardest to write. I get an extra two, so that gives me another 10. Makes my running total 20. All right, you're gonna do this through three more rounds. At the end of the five rounds, you're going to add up, bring down your total score here. You're gonna add up the points you get for your unique number and your pairs. Unique number basically means I have, um, for every six that I have right here, I'm gonna get some points. And for pairs, for every one and two I have in here, I'm gonna get some points. You're gonna figure out how many different animals, council members you've um, visited and completed, circle that number, how many of these areas you've completed, put that number and you have your total there. And either you can do the missions here, which I talked about earlier, or just try to beat your own score. And if you're playing with multiple people, you just wanna have the high score. So that's how you play Roar and Write. Let's go up to the top, see what you think about it. All right, well, that was Roar and Write. Uh, first, I wanna just put this up at the top. This is a prototype, a really nice prototype, but still not a final version. 
I know there's gonna be some changes where your personal goal is actually gonna be on the back of your score sheet, I believe, so all of them are gonna be different, which is pretty cool. The dice are gonna look different. Um, the rule book will not just be stable pieces of paper together. I didn't show you that, but it's just stable together. And there may be some changes to the council cards, but either way, what you saw here is essentially going to be what the game is. It just is gonna look nicer, of course. So that another way, let's talk about the game. So I've always said that I'm not a huge fan of rolling rights, but I might be calling myself a liar because I've been doing more and more rolling rights and I've been liking them a lot more. Uh, on tour is good, King Domino Duel is fun, Welcome to is all right, and this one is actually really fun. So the, I think the reason that I like this is it's a solo as a solo game, I can just go roll some dice, do a little bit of thinking, and try to get the most points that I, I as possible. I haven't played the solo mode, which is where you're trying to get certain missions and get certain points. I haven't done that. I'm just trying to beat my own score because that's fun. And yeah, it's enjoyable. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to use my dice. Do I want to do some X's and go up to the top? Fill out more of the kingdom to get more points? Is it more beneficial to score the council members? It's, it's a good game. I enjoy it. The art is gorgeous. So this box art is really nice. Uh, Animal Kingdoms has really nice art too. All the art on the council member cards is really nice. Um, I actually enjoy these dice as well. I know that they're just regular dice, but I like the colors and I think they're really nice. So yeah, this is a good game. The score sheet's really easy to understand. Uh, the rule book, I had a couple questions, but I emailed the designer and she filled me in. So it wasn't that big of an issue. Just some nitpicks maybe that I'm too daft to understand for the rule book or whatever. So rule book's fine. It'll get you through the game. Um, this playthrough will show you exactly what you need to do as well. So I'm gonna give this a BGM accepted seal. And I'm gonna give this a seven and a half wrenches out of, or wrenches, brr. yeah, we don't have that many wrenches. Seven and a half out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.75 out of five wrenches on our arbitrary scale. That means absolutely nothing, yada, 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 but we like to give the, the games that we like, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. So this is gonna hit Kickstarter June 30th. That's the estimated time. It could be moved up, it could be delayed, but that's the estimated time. This video will release whenever the Kickstarter is alive, so alive. Man, I am awful at talking today. When this Kickstarter is live, live, not alive, and then you can go back in and throw some support. I'll put a link in the video and all that stuff when it's available. So that is Roran Wright from Galactic Raptors and designer Carla Cop. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming or roaring.